Hello everybody, today we're going to go ahead and do some modification to my Intex pool. Again, this is a, a 20 foot pool by 48 inches deep. Best way, uh, Power Steel Deluxe Series. It's been a great pool thus far. Uh, yesterday it was 102 degrees and the pool temp water was just, whew, it was pretty hot. So what we're going to do is use some of the tips and tricks that I've learned from other YouTubers online to create a sprinkler system for this so that we can get the air to basically cool down the water as it goes back in the pool. So as a reminder, I've got basically two um, inlets to the pump. Uh, going into my 16 inch, uh, I think it's a 2400 gallon per hour Intex pump into the saltwater system. And really, all we're going to be messing with today is this specific tube right here, just this one. All right. And right now, what it is, it comes out of the uh, saltwater system up into a plunger valve. And um, Today what we're going to do is use some hard PVC pipe and we're going to basically split off of this hose and make it, uh, I haven't decided yet we're gonna, whether it's going to go uh, to the left or to the right, so that's the right, obviously that's the left, but we're going to run it up one of these poles, right? And when it gets to the top of the pole, it's going to basically be a bar coming across the top with a series of um, sprinkler heads if you will going into the water so we're going to go ahead and work on that today first things first is basically to build the actual sprinkler so that's what we'll stop off next and show you how to build the actual sprinkler and then uh, we'll show you how to tee off of uh, the uh, plunger valve and I guess most importantly is how do you connect the uh, Intex hoses which are metric okay so how do I take this metric uh, coupler here this this uh, this nut and uh, how do I connect that to an actual PVC pipe there's a lot of people who have done this it's it's not really rocket science but um, there's a couple easy things that I've noticed should be somewhat simple to do so stand by and we'll go ahead and show you how we're gonna do that okay so to put the fountain together I'm gonna be put I got this idea from somebody else on YouTube so this is definitely not mine to be taken but I thought it was a great idea and I'm, it's the reason that I'm using it in this way is because I notice that sometimes people take you know, just a PVC piece of pipe and and uh, you know they just drill a whole bunch of holes in it okay and then let the, let the water just kind of you know, come out of the holes and the reason I don't like that is um, you know I'm all about doing things a little redneck that doesn't bother me the heck I'm building a sprinkler made out of PVC for crying out loud but you know, I've also noticed that if you don't drill the holes in a perfect line, okay, all the way across, and even if you have it at a perfect line, if you don't have it at the perfect angle, uh, you know, the, the water is just going to kind of go all over and not in any sort of, sort of uniform fashion. And, and I just don't want that. So uh, I saw someone had put um, this type of um, sprinkler system together. And what they did was uh, they're using basically uh, uh, PVC tees, all right? difference here is that you've got on each side of it you've got a slip okay and then on the one side it's actually a threaded um, you know female portion and what we're doing is we're going to use these uh, PEX shark bite adapters and they're pretty cool uh, they're they're male um, threaded obviously and they have kind of you know uh, in the plumbing term uh, some sort of little nipple there all right, to let the water just uh, come straight out. So the idea is that the water goes in um, uh, into this uh, one half uh, inch pipe and comes uh, out this uh, little uh, end here, thus creating more pressure. I am using um, half inch PVC for the actual sprinkler. I did that on purpose because I wanted to reduce down from one and a half inch uh, pipe from the actual filter to uh, a half inch uh, sprinkler system. And the reason for that, again, is to uh, create more pressure. So maybe I have too much pressure in doing this. I don't know. We're going to find out. Uh, but the idea here is that on each side also, instead of the T and just capping off a, you know, a, a piece of PVC, I'm just using an elbow. And it's the same exact concept. This is a, a slip on this side and a, uh, and a threaded portion on this side. Now, it depends on how long you want your 
sprinkler to be, to, how long you want, it's completely up to you. I'm going to try to put mine in between the two posts of my pool, um, the, the legs of the pool, if you will, and those are about 36 inches apart. So I've got 10 of these adapters, all right, and I've got eight of these T's, and I've got two of the uh, 90 degree elbows. So I'm going to have basically 10 fixtures going across. These will be connected by putting a piece of PVC inside of each of them. And uh, I'll basically have 10 pieces going across uh, with uh, this uh, you know, little adapter at the end uh, squirting the water out. So uh, I'll put that together here and I'll show you what it looks like. So here is the dry fitted uh, sprinkler. And as you can see, I've got 10 of those adapters. And what I didn't tell you also was this particular T-junction is not the threaded one you know, there because that's what's going to slip into the pipe going into the actual uh, pump system. So basically the way this is going to work, let me sit here for a second, without falling into the pool, is we're going to set this at the right angle so that this kind of sits upwards a little bit, a little bit like that. So I can shoot out in the pool. This particular T-junction is going to kind of run down that pipe, put the elbow over, and basically connect over to the pool out there. So I just want to see what you looks, we see what it looks like actually before it's all done. Each of the PVC connectors in between the actual T's and such, those are two inches each. And as you can see, it's about 36 inches all the way across. And again, the idea is that this will now go straight down, pull there, and cut across. So it's going to set here right on top of the rail. I'll probably zip tie it down to hold it in place. I'll adjust the particular angle so this is going in the right direction. So now the next step is really just to ensure that it's uh, glued together. Something else to think about is you want to make sure when you look down this that those adapters are as straight as possible. Otherwise, they you know it'll look funny when the water squirts out. So this is dry fit here. But uh, what, what you can really do is is if if you're happy with the way they are, you can flip it over, kind of draw a line connecting all the pieces, so that when you glue it, you just line the lines up and you'll be able to set. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this uh, together. I'm going to glue everything actually except one segment, which is this T, because I want to make sure I can position this properly. Once I'm happy with the way it's positioned, I will glue it in and we'll go from there. So, next step is just to glue this all together with the exception of this T. Alright, don't glue the two pieces of PVC on each side of that, just leave it alone for a second. When you're happy with where it is, then you can glue it. So, we'll glue it next, and then we'll take the next step, which is to basically build the uh, connections between this and tight. Before we can attach the sprinkler to the actual output from the filter to the pool, we actually have to create a connection from the filter to the pool that incorporates some sort of PVC um, fitting. And it's difficult to do most um, there's a lot of places on YouTube, there's a lot of YouTubers have done this, so it doesn't take a lot of rocket science to do it. But the first thing you have to do is get yourself an old um, Intex pipe, basically. Uh, and Or you can buy them online, they're not that expensive. But the reality is what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to cut off the little flange right here. Okay. Once that little flange is cut off, just use a hacksaw and cut it right off. This, this little nut right here will come right off. Now the issue with these nuts is that... Um, they are metric, so they don't have the same thread count as a standard American PVC threaded fitting. So you can't just go switch it out to PVC and just connect it straight. Uh, you can, you can get a couple turns on this, it actually might work, but I think that's probably better just to keep the exi existing nut if you can. So once you've cut off the, the lip and you, and you have your, your, st your stock Intex nut, then you could go ahead and get one simple piece, it's less than $2 at um, Lowe's or Home Depot. First, I went to Lowe's and I got this. This is one and a half inch to one and a quarter inch bushing. And my thought process was this little lip right here would be enough. So I went and got it and it's just not enough. It just wants to come out. All right, so 
The one at Lowe's, or at least the ones that have the round uh, edge, aren't going to cut it. So I went to Home Depot, got the same exact thing. The difference is, is they've got it uh, where you can uh, apply a wrench to it, if you will. Same exact thing. It's one and a half inch to one and a quarter inch bushing. Now what's going to happen here is you're going to take this, this um, Intex nut. It's going to go right in th through there like that. And you can see it doesn't come off. And the great part is, is now I can attach this to any sort of uh, PVC coupler. So I'm just going to do that right here, just dry fit it. All right. All right, it's nice and dry fit. And you can see it still spins just fine. It's not going to come off. I'm going to glue that, of course. Now, the last thing I'm going to be doing is I've, I've made the decision to switch it, uh, for this pipe anyways, to switch to flexible PVC. Now, flexible PVC is the same thing. It's made the same thing as PVC, except it's in a tubing form. So what that does is you don't have to have rigid 90 degree, 45 degree, whatever angles and do lots of cuts and measurements. I'm thinking uh, that the idea here is because I have an above ground pool that's going to come down in the winter and up in the summer over repeated times, if I use rigid PVC, I have to put my pump in the same place and I have to have my pool in exactly the same place so I can have those measurements fit exactly. Now, of course, if you are using an above ground pool where you're going to have it there the same place every year, you're never going to take it down. Yeah, rigid PVC makes 100% sense. It's not going to move. It's going to stay there. But if you're going to take your pool down and bring it back up, that's why they have these types of uh, pipes really come with a pool because you don't have to be so precise. Well, that's where this came in. The downside to this is that it's much more expensive. This uh, is about $5 a foot. So to get a six foot piece, which I got here, and I got a six foot piece to match the six foot piece that came with the pool, um, this is about $30. So it's not that expensive, but it's definitely more expensive than buying just a stick of PVC. A stick of PVC, a 10 foot stick is gonna be, you know, about $5 for this one and a half inch um, uh, diameter. So it's, you know, it's about five times the price. Um, but you know what, that's what I wanna do. I just wanna make it uh, a lot easier. Now, once you have your, your fitting glued, of course, this PVC is just like any other PVC. You, you apply your glue, it goes into the fitting like so, and now you've got yourself your own homemade uh, Intex pipe to standard PVC um, connection. So basically the other end of this is now gonna come up all the way uh, to the, uh, to where right now it's gonna be up to a, a, a T junction, and that T junction is gonna allow me to uh, create um, a, a fitting for the sprinkler. So we'll show you how that works here in just a sec. I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing. And the one last thing you have to do on these is there is uh, some writing on the uh, lip of these fittings, okay? And so you want to take some sandpaper and just kind of sand it off. It'll be real quick. Just sort of take your sander, just kind of touch it up on there, get that, uh, get those raised letters off and you'll be fine. So first thing you want to do is do that. So I'm going to be sanding that off and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a connection here and we'll show you what the next step is after that. So here's basically what the connection to the pool is going to look like and how it's going to tee off. So what we've got here is a one and a half inch by one and a half inch fern co. Uh, fitting these are about four or five dollars at Lowe's and basically this end right here is going to Go right up into the plunger uh, valve that came with the pool and just cinch that down on the screws The other end is actually attached to uh, It's probably about six inches of the flexible PVC that I cut off We'll cinch that down again with the screws this PVC now goes into just a standard um, T junction, so this is just a one and a half inch PVC T this will be glued in and of course the other end now is the other part of the PVC which will go all the way out to the end uh, to the um, to the actual filter so this part will just come up the water come out of the filter all the way up into here and it will go up into the um, into the current output as well as it will go out here so what we've got here is a bushing this is one and a half inch to half inch bushing okay and um, basically what's going to happen is uh, we'll put a little piece, uh, one and a half, uh, excuse me, half inch PVC to connect that. And this is basically what it's going to look like, okay? And so there's a valve there, of course, in which will let me turn off the sprinkler, turn on the sprinkler, and then all the way from here, just go all the way out to the sprinkler. So this is what it's going to look like, uh, just kind of a dry fit, just kind of give you an idea. So again, this portion here goes to the plunger valve that goes that's already attached to the pool 
you've got one and a half inch uh, flexible PVC that's going to be glued in and cinched down on the Fernco fitter fitting. Uh, this is the same one and a half inch flexible PVC which will be glued in. Uh, we're going to glue in this bushing. This is threaded in, so we'll just use some uh, pipe thread tape and thread that in. Put a piece of half inch uh, PVC in here, probably about a two inch piece, and then from there we're going to uh, glue that into this. Again, this is um, this has got some threaded pieces as well, uh, so we'll use uh, the the pipe tape for that, and that gives you the ability to turn the water on and off or at least adjust the flow. So we'll go ahead and attach that and show you what it looks like. Okay, so now this is what it looks like after it's all been installed. So as you can see, we've got basically the standard plunger valve that came with the pool attached um, to, it is a Fernco, which is just cinched down. This is one and a half inch by one and a half inch. Uh, this is also cinched down to another piece of the flexible PVC, something to note. You can cinch this down too much and it'll pinch in on this flexible PVC because it is flexible. So you want this to bite but not bite too hard. This one can bite just fine because it's biting onto a hard piece of plastic. This is flexible PVC so it's going to um, give if you squeeze it too much. So just be careful of that. As we move down we have the T here all the way over to the ball valve. Okay, And down the T you can see that it's a big old roller coaster of tubes going into the fitting that we created using the standard nut, the bushing, and just a coupler into this pipe. So now the moment of truth is we'll see what happens when we turn on the actual filter. So let's see what happens. We're going to go down here and turn this bad boy on. Okay. So thus far, no leaks. Okay, so uh, I know it's working because my uh, uh, skimmer started working as well as my vacuum just took off. So I know it's definitely got the pressure. So now another way to test this particular ball valve here. What's going to happen now is I'm going to attach the sprinkler to this ball valve thing. It's going to come out to this pole and come up. And basically I haven't decided if it's going to go this way or that way yet, but we'll see when I attach it. So if I test this valve water should, should start coming out of here. So let's see. Yep, great. So that's where the source of the water is to the sprinkler. Close that off. And now we will go ahead and attach the sprinkler and hopefully get this whole thing done. Okay, so here's where we ended up. I wanted to use 10 nozzles or spigots, whatever you want to call them, nozzles. Let's call them nozzles. I wanted to use 10 nozzles, but when I turned on the water, it was just dribbling out. There was just clearly not enough pressure uh, to sustain 10 of those particular openings. So I reduced it down to three. And as you can see, it is capped off at the end, going to a 90, a 90, down to a 90, and over to the ball valve. So my filter is going and running right now. There is no water uh, running through the sprinkler. So to turn on the sprinkler, I just come on down here and open this valve. Opening the valve, as you can see, is a dribble. But I expected that. So how do we remedy that? Well, what you do is you go down to your uh, plunger valve and you just reduce the water pressure here. So I'm gonna reduce this. Watch what happens when I actually close this valve out. I'm gonna close it, close it, close it, close it. So it goes pretty good. And if I close it out, right, just cinch it down. Um, basically what happens is I get the most um, arch, if you will, the most throw to that. So uh, that's where uh, I'm at right now. Basically, just close it completely. And the three uh, nozzles there are just throwing the water out much to the middle of the pool. So I'm pretty happy with that. don't have any water now coming through this. So obviously if you're going to be running a soap, uh, I, I have to drop off it. If you're going to be running a vacuum or something, you can get to that at the same time. So thus far, I'm very happy with it. So lessons learned. Looks like you can only use about three for the houses to open. Look at least from that size perspective. I'm sure if you uh, have smaller ones, uh, smaller openings, then you, uh, you can increase the count. So the very last thing I need to do 
as I was just testing the size, I just need to glue uh, basically this joint and this joint and these two joints here. But I'm also just going to throw a cable tie around here and a cable tie around here just to hold it in place. But I think this is going to be great. And uh, my goal here, like I said, is to reduce the temperature of the food is I live in Texas and just so I hope this helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know.